Hey everyone, it's Andrea, your friendly neighborhood massage therapist, and welcome to Massage in Place. I know we're all spending a lot more time in our own homes and obviously aren't able to get a massage, but if we have to shelter in place, we can at least massage in place. So today I wanted to show you some excellent techniques for foot massage. Um, for ease of instruction, I'm going to show you for self-care foot massage, but all of these techniques can be easily applied to a partner as well. So I'm going to start with some techniques that you can do using your hands. And then as we continue, I'm going to show you some other techniques that you can use tools with. Whether you're using your hands or using tools to work on your own feet or someone else's, the one thing that you always want to have is some kind of a lubricant. So whether it's um, a body oil, a body cream, um, the skin on top of your feet can actually be very sensitive. And the last thing that you want is to feel like you're trying to give yourself or someone else a friction burn. The oil that I really like to use is olive oil. And I wish I could say that it's for a better reason other than it's just in my house, but it's in my house all the time. Um, it also has an excellent glide and it does tend to absorb into your skin a little bit better and it's really good for your skin too. Now, I know that at the beginning of all my videos, I talk about safety and making sure that, um, you know, the pressure you're applying isn't too heavy or uh, that you're careful of bony structures in yourself or your partner. But for today's safety, I want to remind you that if you are applying oil to your feet, please make sure before you stand up again um, that you maybe put on socks or that you wipe your, your feet so that they're very clean. Um, the last thing that you want is to work on your own feet and stand up and then have a slip and fall. So that's the main safety for today. So I have a little bit of olive oil in here. And you can just put a little bit on your fingers and then on your hand. Okay. Now, as with all of our videos, you know, we always emphasize that pressure doesn't have to be deep in order to be effective. But one of the other reasons that we tell you, especially in the beginning, to start off at a lighter pressure is because a lighter pressure done more times increases circulation and it makes it a lot easier for those muscles to relax and open up. It's a lot easier for your muscles to relax and open when there's a good hyperemia, meaning um, there's a good amount of blood coming through the surface, really being moved through those muscles, tendons, and skin. In your feet in particular, you don't have a lot of muscle, and you specifically don't have anything in terms of muscle belly the way that you will with your calves um, or other long, you know, larger lung muscles. You tend to get a lot of attachment points, so you get a lot of tendons coming in through your feet here, wrapping around underneath your feet here, you have ligaments keeping your bones together, and there are so many bones for such a small amount of space. Um, so when you're working, what you want to think of is working, like as you can see with my foot, the muscles come down my leg, and then they all attach into the various bones, into the different surfaces, the plantar surface um, here, as well as you know coming down uh, so that you can flex, so that you can extend. So since everything comes down sort of in a line, that's how you want to start working your foot. So using my thumbs and fingertips, I can just start working from the heel up to the ball of my foot in a line. And as I do this, I'm going from the inside of my foot here at the arch then moving along again right next to it, going to the second toe, then along again to the third toe, fourth toe, and fifth toe. And you can change the technique as you're going. If there are certain areas that feel better to you or to your partner, you can kind of do a few strokes on those areas. So if I want to, let's say, work my outside foot a little bit more, I can do that. If I want to work inside near the arch of my foot here, now in the arch of your foot, you're going to actually feel like some, 
call them like Rice Krispies treats. Um, they're little adhesions, you know, little buildups of tension and things like that. You want to be careful about these with yourself and your partner just because they can be extremely tender in some people. Now, as you notice, I'm using my thumbs and I'm using my fingertips a lot. And it can be kind of hard on your hands. So if you do get tired of using your fingertips or if you feel like you're about to get tired or you feel like your fingers are strained, you can go in for your knuckles. Now what you may feel as you're doing this, and or as your partner may feel when you're doing this, is that broader pressure, like what I'm doing right now, actually feels really good. Um, in those tender areas, generally broader pressure is a lot easier for the body to handle. It doesn't have to be very deep, but when you broaden it out, again, it just it allows the area to have more surface to play with. So after you've warmed up and stroked the whole foot up along the toes. You can start with your heel here and use your fingertips to apply a nice circular pressure right for the ball of the heel there. Now you may feel like it's hard to get more pressure using your fingertips the way that I am. If you do feel that way, just start to use, um, you can either use the flat part of your fingers here or you can even use your knuckles. I like using the flat part of my fingers. And as you do this, you're doing this in a nice circular motion. So just little circles like this as you move around the heel. And as you warm up that heel even more, you can apply pressure from your knuckles. It can feel really, really good almost like giving your heel like a little bit of a noogie, but it feels very, very good. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you or your partner have a heel spur, um, or if you've been experiencing sciatic pain, sometimes you can have a, either, um, either a buildup of like bone or calcium, or you can have a buildup of tension in the tendon, and you'll actually feel like a lump, almost, or um, almost feels like a pebble actually in the heel. Don't try to grind that away. <laughs> Work around it. It's going to be extremely tender, um, and the last thing that you want to do is inflame that area. So you can gently work around that area, you know, kind of work around it here, because generally it tends to be right in the center of the heel. So you can work around that area, and if you work over that area, just work gently over that area. Now, if you're the one working on your partner and you see them start to wince, ease up. If you're the one being worked on and you're feeling uncomfortable, um, if you're feeling in pain, as always, good communication with your partner is very, very important. So really let them know what's going on, how things feel. You don't want to put yourself in pain and you don't want to accidentally inflame any areas. And once you've finished working on the heel, you can move up into the center portion of your foot. Again, I really like using my knuckles and the flats of like the tops of my fingers here. Nice broad pressure. And you can move quickly, you can move slowly. And it's just a nice stripping motion as we strip the muscles and tendons going up to the ball of the foot. Now you may experience more, tended, more tension here uh, along the arch of your foot. The arch of your foot tends to do a lot of work in your standing, walking, um, and running life. So if you are experiencing more tension here, just as I said with uh, any buildup along the heel, you don't have to try to grind through tension, especially in your feet. Um, be gentle with that area. Use, use softer strokes more often because the last thing that you want to do is inflame the plantar surface of your foot. Um, people, you know, you, you may have heard the term plantar fasciitis. What it literally means is it means that the fascia along the plantar surface of your foot becomes inflamed. So if you're feeling a lot of tension, um, if you're feeling a lot of, you know, kind of crunchy spots like Rice Krispie spots in your feet, this is my 
dog Carmen, by the way. If you're feeling a lot of crunchy spots in your feet, um, you know, you don't have to try to like, crunch them out. You can just do more gentle strokes, really increase that circulation because that's going to be one of the best things. Uh, when you increase circulation in an area, not only are you bringing blood to that area, it also really helps at bringing oxygen to that area as well. Um, so blood and oxygen are going to help your are going to help your muscles, tendons. It really helps with healing and recovery, um, as well as flushing out, you know, metabolic waste like uh, sodium, um, dead muscle cells that may have been trapped. It's just going to help open everything up, loosen everything. and relax and make that area feel good. So again, we can use our thumbs, we can use our fingertips, but I really like to use the flats of my fingers and then even my knuckles. And it's nice to use your knuckles along like the outer edge on the outside of your foot here. And then you can just move along toward the inside. And again, if you or your partner are very tender in the arch of your foot here, just go easier, go more mellow. And then you can move up to the ball of your foot. Again, kind of bringing circles, using your thumbs, or using the flats of your fingers. Feels really, really good. What feels really good is when you get in between the bones of your feet here. So you can kind of apply a little more pressure. The skin on the ball of your feet can be a little thicker, so you may want to use a little more, a little more oil. And between the third and fourth toes, and between the fourth and fifth toes. And then again, bringing those nice knuckles the nice flats of your fingers to the balls of your feet. And this feels really good as well. Now there's a technique that you can use uh, for, with both of your hands around your whole foot and it's actually a ringing technique. Now this technique is one, again, we're going to want to make sure that we have some oil or lotion um, on our hands and on our feet because this is like a friction burn if you don't use any kind of lubrication because again it's a ringing technique you can either ring this way or you can ring this way so like that or like this and then you can even use your thumbs just on the full plantar surface of your foot. And that feels really good. And then this technique is a little harder to do on your own, but it's very easy to do with a partner. Um, so what you're going to do is you can see the tendons uh, of each toe here, the tendons going over the bones here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go between the tendon and bone of each toe. So I'm going between the pinky and fourth toe here, going between the fourth and third toe here, the third and second toe here, and the second toe and the big toe here. And then you can do a little bit of a, this little piggy with each of your toes. And if you do feel that your feet are very tight, um, if they're really having a hard time, you know, if you're having a hard time with their range of motion, or if they just feel like they're a little rigid, you can hold each toe and move that part of your foot. So with my left hand, I'm holding the main part of my left foot but with my right hand, I'm taking hold of that, of that fifth toe knuckle, and I'm just moving it gently up and down. And what this is doing is it is 
um, activating the last bone here. Um, it's activating your tarsal and metatarsal. Um, it's asking any fascia in that area to loosen up. It's bringing circulation. And then I can take hold of the second knuckle here, the, the knuckle of the second toe here. And again, move it back and forth, separating it from its neighbor. Not very aggressively, just in a nice natural way. If you're feeling pain, don't continue, but a little bit of ache, like a nice stretch is okay. Then move on to your the knuckle of your third toe, moving those tarsals and metatarsals back and forth. And then you can put your fingers uh, on the knuckle of your second toe and move the rest of your foot and your big toe again apart. And you're just increasing your range of motion, increasing your mobility and the action of that foot. And then again, you can go into a nice ringing. Now the techniques that I've shown you are primarily for the foot itself and the plantar surface especially, but you can also, you know, work your thumbs, work your fingertips around your ankle. If this is an area that's been bothering you, you can work in nice long strokes around your ankle. Nothing fancy, just Nice long strokes going around. And then we've brought a lot of circulation to your foot um, and we've tended to work from the center of our body out to the extremities. If you find that your uh, feet, you know, experience edema or any swelling, while you're doing this, also give your feet some nice strokes moving back toward the center. And it's gonna encourage any fluid or any inflammation to again kind of move up the legs instead of concentrating down into your feet. Um, this can also be really nice if you experience any kind of edema in your feet. Um, the big rule though for inflammation and especially for edema is you're not, you're, it's not like trying to squeeze toothpaste out of a tube. You're actually going to be extremely gentle because if you are trying to push that fluid up You'll succeed, but it's going to be a lot of fluid all at once. So going gently, a little bit lighter, and stroking up the leg is going to also move fluid, but in a more manageable way for your body. And those are the manual techniques for your feet. Moving on, you may notice that there are a few tools that I have here that I tend to use for um, my own self-care. Some are specifically massage tools and some are household objects. So this tool, for example, is a fascia blaster. Um, all of the fingertip techniques that I showed you, I can do the same techniques using my fascia blaster on the bottom of my feet and along my muscles. Um, this, is, this is something I picked up from Walmart for I think $12 one day. Um, it is a Gold's Gym foot massager. Um, again, if I put a little bit of oil on the bottom of my feet, I can apply that to the plantar surface and really relax and open up and bring circulation to the bottom of my foot here. But also, I can put it on the floor and roll it back and forth like this on the bottom of my foot. A similar tool that you can use for that is if you have a golf ball or a tennis ball at home, you can roll the plantar surface of your foot along a golf ball or a tennis ball. Um, one thing that we actually really like is if you have a basin, you can fill your basin with hot water, put Epsom salt in and a golf ball at the bottom, and then you can just gently roll the bottom of your foot and that nice hot water, that nice warm water is going to increase your circulation. It's gonna help relax the muscles and the tendons of your feet. Um, and the Epsom salt is, again, going to help to loosen and open up the bottom of your feet as well. 
Um, meanwhile, the golf ball is going to break up fascial adhesions, and um, you can you know hold them hold that golf ball on certain tension points. Um, so that's really helpful as well. I I do tend to use this every now and then. Um, plus, it vibrates, so that's pretty cool for the bottom of my feet. Now, a kind of impromptu tool that I use is this. It's called the Posture Prep. It's basically a curry comb for horses. Um, but I am a horse person, so I have things like this around my house. And again, it works very similar to the Fascia Blaster in that instead of using my fingertips, I have these nice, like, little, little nice uh, rounded nubs. And I can use those on the bottom of my feet. And you might think that you don't have anything like this at home, but chances are, if, uh, if you've ever been to Bath & Body Works, there are a lot of similar tools that they sell there. Um, and there are a lot of similar tools that if you wanted to buy one on Amazon, they're definitely available. And again, the name of the game is light to moderate pressure. I'm not being aggressive towards my feet. I need to use them later, so I definitely don't want to cause them to become inflamed or sore um, or make walking and moving around difficult at all for myself. And the last tool that I'm including might be a little surprising, but it's actually a wooden mixing spoon. Um, I like these because they are great thumb savers. Also, the edges tend to be a lot more rounded, so it's not sharp like a regular soup spoon or um, teaspoon especially. Um, you can use the edges gently rolling along in these nice, you know, kind of stripping strokes, moving from heel up to the ball of your foot. And if you want, you can even use the handle on the flat side. Now, the tool techniques that I've shown you, I really feel like are better for your self-care rather than necessarily partner techniques. Um, because when you're working with a partner, you want to be able to feel as much as possible so that if there are um, adhesions in an area, if you're feeling kind of these stuck spots, these Rice Krispies, you can't feel them as well with a tool. Um, so if you're causing your partner pain or discomfort, you might not know right away. Um, so definitely with partnered work, at the very least, start using your hands so that you can really feel an area. And then if you do decide to use any tools, use them very gently, very conservatively. Sometimes people treat their bodies um, when they're trying to work out tension. It's like they're, it's like they're mixing uh, cake batter and trying to like crush the cake batter, the little dry bits of cake batter. Um, so that it, you know, so that it's smoother. But your body is not like cake batter, and you can't just grind things out. You have to be gentle with yourself, and results take a little bit of time. Now, thankfully, we have some time right now. And then again, we can have some nice ringing techniques. Some nice opening techniques. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you found this video on massage techniques for your feet, um, both manual and with tools for self-care and for your partner, um, very helpful. But obviously there's kind of a lot of information uh, for some general work on the feet. So if you have specific questions, please feel, please feel free to private message us, um, or if you're comfortable leaving them in the comments below, we'll definitely do our best to answer them. Um, if you liked this video, if you find it helpful, please like and subscribe here on YouTube or like and share on Facebook. Because again, while we are sheltering in place, we may as well massage in place. And a final note, again, before you get up, please make sure to clean your feet or put socks on so that you don't have a slip and fall accident due to oil or cream on the bottoms of your feet.